Howdy, yo, friends and foes, and welcome to Dads on Life, your weekly episodic show on parenting from another perspective. And with me, as always, I'm my co host, Good morning from Ohio. Good morning, Chad Holloway. Good morning from Georgia. Doug Hammonite. Lovely Bath PA. And Dave Duesenberg. Good morning from New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, today we're going to be talking about um, pets in our lives, uh, pets as they pertain to our children. Uh, we tried talking about this before, but uh, through certain te technical difficulties, where we were not able to complete the show. Um, it seemed to be the start of something good, but uh, we had to restart and go back from scratch. Um, who wants to kick us off? Meow. <laughs> <laughs> Pun intended, by the way. When I said scratch. <laughs> Very nice. I don't know. I think I was the one, one, one of the idea generators on this one because um, it, it, <clears throat> the frustration has really been growing for me over the last six months. Uh, as everybody on the internet seems to know, I have a cat, a cat that I uh, am the guardian for, for my brother who passed away in February. And the, the cat, you no, know, he's a wonderful little guy, a little bit standoffish, <laughs> fun. But he represents the first uh, pet that's been in the family since 2000, late, middle of 2000, late 2002. When Justin was born in 99 uh, and we had a cat, we had five cats. Um, in 2002, when Jeremy was born, my then wife decided oh my god cats are dangerous they'll they're a danger to the to the children and they have to go away now one of the five cats was mine and the other four she brought into the marriage and i loved them all it was great but um, mine was on the verge of passing away anyway he was 18 and a half years old and he uh, he actually chose to disappear uh shortly after that decision the other four, uh, she dispensed with, and I'm not going to get into it, but uh, I, I don't advocate what happened. Um, and from that forward, time on, we didn't we, we didn't have pets for a long time until she decided she wanted a rabbit, a rabbit this small, you know, what, what's called a mini dwarf um, or a dwarf bunny. Uh, but the kids were never exposed to cats; they weren't exposed to dogs. So over the last six months, as Justin's been back in the house, um, or Justin came back in uh, August after school, you could see he's like, doesn't know what to make of the cat. Now he's starting to warm up. He's starting to kind of reach out and maybe I'll, I'll try touching this thing. Um, and, and there's starting to be this glow in his eyes. Of like, wow, this is kind of fun. This is really cool. Um, and every now and then Keeper will actually walk up and let him scratch his head and all that. And, and, and Justin gets kind of excited about it. And Jeremy really started getting excited about it in this last couple of weeks when he was home. But I feel really bad because I wanted that for them all along. Um, you can tell by the tone of my voice that I somewhat disagreed with the decision that uh, my uh, then wife handed down. Um, and all these years, I haven't really had the chance to uh, have the, that strong interaction with a, a pet that would come up and cuddle with them. And uh, and the rabbit was sort of cuddly, but in a very different way. They're not quite cats. Mm -hmm. um, and so I, I feel like my kids missed out on a, a, some opportunities there that uh, we're going to start making up for. Now, and we're not going to, like, you know, have a bunch of cats in the house. You know, hopefully, maybe there'll be one or two in the next generation. But um, uh, you... you Cats are, it's not just about having fun and having something fuzzy to keep you warm, but there's a responsibility. We, we all know if you have a pet, you got to feed it. Uh, if you have a dog, you have to walk it, which is why I don't have a dog because I'm too lazy and I know it. <clears throat> um, but um, I can see that Justin's starting to, like the last thing I, I'm sitting here in Ohio bringing Jeremy back to school. And the last thing Justin said to me before I left was, Love you, drive safe. By the way, did you feed the cat? Literally in that order. Uh, and so he sort of started taking that responsibility of another creature in his house, which of course, at the age of 23, at some point with these seven seven years of girlfriend now, 
he might have another creature with somewhat less legs in his house soon too. Mm -hmm. so, no. so I think this is a really good building block for him. Uh, I, I wish I had been able to give him that building block earlier, but uh, uh, he, you can definitely tell he's starting to take a piece of that responsibility. Yeah, I think I th I definitely think that pets are kind of they're kind of the gateway drug to kids. Um, I mean, some some couples decide that that's as far as they want to go. I know lots. I have lots of friends that have pets and consider them basically like their children. Never wanted actual physical human children, um, and 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 left it at that. Um, for me, uh, with my boys, uh, you know, when uh, I have two dogs. And uh, we got them in 2013. Uh, originally, the plan was to get one dog. My my older son had turned seven in 2013, and uh, uh, my wife at the time and I were were thinking about getting a dog, uh, and decided that it would make a great it would make a great introduction for his seventh birthday. So we pursued it as a kind of birthday. He, and he had, he had asked about it, you know. Uh, and, uh, we had looked into a couple different breeds and we'd found a, we had found a, a lady that had a litter of puggles. Uh, that is a combination pug beagle. Yes, they are as adorable as you think they are. <laughs> um, over in Bristol PA had a litter of, of, of puppies, uh, four of them, two of them were sold and two of them were available. So, um, I was at work one day and, uh, my wife at the time decided to take my boys over to pick out a dog. Now. Let me just set this up. We have two young children, seven and five, going over to choose one dog when two are available. I'm just, I'm just going to set that up. The plan is to get one dog. So she brings them over, and they look at these puppies. I'm at work. I'm not there. I get this text on my phone that says, meet Thor. And it's this cute little white with black spotted puggle adorable right and we we had already determined that they were going to have superhero names so i get this picture meet thor great and then a moment later and kilowog and it's it's the other puppy of it and i and i texted back i'm like you got two dogs i was like what the hell we were gonna get one so the reason that that happened was because my younger son now the the whole goal was to get a dog for my older son so he sat down and immediately latched onto this one dog. Great. My younger son sat down, and the other available puggle, of course, went over and hung out with him. At, at some point, my wife at the time switched the two boys, and the dogs went to the respected boys. So already we're doomed. And then my youngest, who's five, turns to my wife. No, he was four at the time. He turned five in September. Um, turns to my wife at the time and says, Mommy, these two dogs are brothers. Jay and I are brothers. You always told us that brothers need to stick together. Oh, boy. <laughs> and so that's how I ended up with two dogs instead of one in 2013. Now, it actually worked out really well because we wanted to get, the, we wanted to get a dog, or dogs in this case, around that time to kind of give an idea. The, basically, the, the idea was the dogs would be around for all of the kids – growth years you know all through high school potentially into early college is, is is what it would roughly work out i mean the 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 my youngest um the dogs would be about 14 when my youngest graduates high school so the timing worked out should work out pretty well um when we ended up splitting two years later um i ended up getting the dogs because we had actually talked about it and said hey who's going to get the dogs and she had discovered in those two years, she had no patience for taking care of the dogs. None. She didn't want to clean up after them. She didn't want them on the furniture. How do you have a dog and not have them on the furniture? I still don't understand that. But she didn't want them on the furniture. She didn't like the mess. She didn't want to deal with the, the – and I'm like, I, I, for me, we committed to these dogs. When I give my word, I keep my word. I will take care of these dogs. And they ended up being the best thing for me when I went through my my separation. They were my, they were an absolute lifesaver. Their cuddles and everything like that was an absolute lifesaver. But now it's like, it's 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 the one. It's it's just one of the many features I think that sets my house apart from from my former wife's house. The boys come over, 
And one of the first things they do is they hop on the couch and the dogs are up there and they're asleep on them in like five seconds. They get their cuddle time. They get to hang out. They, they still get to take care of the, of the dogs, you know, feeding them in the afternoons, taking them out for walks and kind of getting used to that, you know, caring for another living thing. At least they still get that here. Um, but yeah, yeah. So that's basically my story. <laughs> <laughs> I go so, yeah. the other. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was gonna say, uh, Frankie just grew up having dogs all all his life. Uh, we had a dog before uh, he was even born, and uh, he just uh, stepped right into that. But then his mom and I separated, so she took she took the dog, and uh, he would on my time. You know, I eventually said, "Well, I'm gonna get you a dog as well." So we got him a dog. Probably he was. I'm gonna say probably eight or nine years old at the time. Um, but, you know, one of the things I want to teach him was, was how to take care of it and have responsibility. And he has a great deal of love. And when he was at my house, he would take care of the dog. Um, and the dog would sleep with me. If, if he wasn't there, he'd sleep with Frankie if Frankie was there. Um, but then I started traveling a little more, you know, through work and uh, through other things. And uh, so it wasn't fair because I was leaving the dog for a long periods of time alone and he wasn't at a good age where he could take care of the dog. And, um, you know, I, I think some of it, he had already actually gone to the university. So, you know, it was just made it difficult for him to, to take care of, to have any responsibility. And when I was looking at that, I was just, it's, it's not fair to this poor, poor dog. So uh, Frankie's mother already had four other dogs. So I said, well, why don't you talk to your mom and see if, see if she'll take him. And then you'll, you can just have all your dogs together. So she did, luckily. Uh, and, um, you know, it, it kind of worked out as a, as a win-win, I think, cause he still has his dog and, you know, gets to take care of it and, uh, whenever he's around, but you know, it, it's a good dog and I, you know, I missed it, but we just, I just don't have a lifestyle where it's real conducive to having pets. So it's not fair for them. The other thing I was going to say is other than dogs, I also got him a red eared slider, a turtle, but I did that very on the, on a whim, um, and I found out that those suckers live for 40 years. Yep. <laughs> not only that, not only that, but they, they're stinky. It's horrible. Their, their cages are so dirty. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're spreaders of salmonella. And so like I cleaned the cage like probably two or three times. And then I talked him into releasing the turtle into the lake, which was next to our house, which had red-eared sliders in it. And so we did that. So it was Shane, the red-eared slider is out there. So whenever I see a turtle with its head up, and the red ears, I'm like, I hope that's Shane. <laughs> 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 but I think that was a, I think that was the extent. We're not. I'm real allergic to cats, so we haven't oh. had any cats. But I've had, uh, <clears throat> we've had several dogs. I had dogs growing up as well. Um, so and other other animals too. My since my dad had a farm, we had a couple of ponies and stuff like that. So. I don't know about where you live, but uh, did you know that in the state of New Jersey, it is illegal to transport a turtle across state lines? Yes. Wow. wow. No. Uh, and uh, when we had that rabbit, we also had a, uh, a nondescript, I don't know what breed turtle it was, because one of her friends had what we call shotgun divorce, where <laughs> she came home one day from work and there was a note on the door from her husband basically saying, get the F out. And wow, it was like a 30 day demand and it, it got very ugly, but she decided to go back to Florida where her first husband was, where they were still friends. Uh, and, uh, you know, for the safety of being near someone who would care for the kids that he had, you know, been father to. Uh, and, uh, but she couldn't take the turtle with her. So we inherited the turtle and, 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 and yeah, we, she couldn't take it across state lines. Wow. So we inherited the turtle. And uh, so uh, we had the, the bunny and the turtle. And that I, I, I was the one who wound up getting stuck cleaning the cage because the water was, water jug was too heavy and all that. So well, you have to help me and all that. So I wanted to be able to clean the damn thing. By the way, you know, if you weren't paying attention, that meant we had the tortoise and the hare. Yes. 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 <laughs> that was fun. But yeah. anyway. And you guys uh, raced one day, right? Say again. And you guys raced them one day, right? Uh, well, you know, something, uh, BB, the, tur the, the bunny would have been so, uh, confused. He would have run backwards and lost. So, yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, 
other things you can't transport are uh, snakehead fish. And uh, yeah, if you ever wonder about the decimation of uh, you know Pennsylvania and what's going on here, no. <laughs> yeah. Well, they're snakeheads. Snakeheads are nasty. They're a very invasive species. I've watched a couple things on them, man. They're nasty. I know. I watched too many sci-fi movies. <laughs> <laughs> The idea that, uh, you know, your pets pick you and you don't pick the pet is definitely uh, affectionate and really cool in my house. Uh, I do have seven cats to go on with. Uh, we, we won't uh, go into uh, next week uh, thing, but uh, yeah, maybe cat herding is a, like another thing. Hoarding. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so every time I, my sister-in-law comes up, I always cringe. She is a foster per- person for uh cats so we've always had animals whether dogs and cats both at the same time and it's uh funny that people like uh have this stigmatism with cats and uh uh just the way that they react to people and all mine are all super friendly all seven of them go figure how and uh (laughs) they uh love dogs and uh we actually uh babysit uh two of our neighbor's dogs multiple times and uh, for like at least a week on end and new year's eve we like one of those things where floor one brought over their dog and then floor two brought over their dog i'm like okay well if we didn't 20 people wasn't enough well now we have uh, all these dogs here too with my seven cats <laughs> but the cats definitely uh take a liking to certain people uh my yeah. wife definitely owns a bunch of them uh me I am the caretaker of all of them, uh-huh. cleaning, feeding, and all. And guess how many cats I got? <laughs> Pretty much uh, <laughs> one, which has always uh, been the thing. And it's very interesting that uh, the attraction of black cats. So um, I've always had, uh, they've come from terrible homes. And uh, for some reason, the black cats uh, tend to uh, be more friendly to me. Than the rest of the family. Uh, I don't yeah, know. That explains they a lot. <laughs> they they know a goth when they see it. They're, they're like, you're our people. We know. <laughs> see that that also explains Doug Doug why you you know getting rid of stuff in the house. So you're making room for the cats, not the people. Oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> that is not with all all everything else that is not the direction I'm going in. <laughs> <laughs> collecting more cats but uh yeah it's been fun and i mean even as a kid i mean uh it's also interesting that uh animals and their feeding habits and stuff and um basically uh when i was a kid uh there was a dog across the street um miguel who was a siberian husky and my grandmother would feed him all the time so these people split up and uh left and when they left they just left their dog and my grandmother wow. inherited this dog and overfed him and it was a mess and it was sad but it was also like we loved miguel he was just like this big giant friggin' dog but um also um my mom had her aunt die and we inherited cha-cha which was a Siberian, uh, not uh, a german shepherd so we had a german shepherd and then another aunt died and then we had buckley which was another just big haired dog who had worms and was gross and hated everyone. But uh, yeah, I mean, growing up that we also had uh, a range of dogs as well as cats. So uh, I don't know. Yeah. Same here. We had, we had both, you know, I, in fact, a lot of times when I was growing up, we either had two cats and one dog or two dogs and one cat at at any given time when I was growing up um, uh, back in the day down in Tom's river. You know, and you mentioned uh, uh, getting adopted by animals that were abandoned in, in, in some way, shape or form prior. That happened to me, too. I was um, I was living in North Brunswick <laughs> um, in, uh, in an apartment complex there. And uh, I had uh, the girl that I that I had been dating for a couple of years prior. She and I had just broken up and we had had a cat together named Hemlock. And she took the cat when she moved out. And. I was like, crap, that sucks because I love that cat. And I was like, what am I going to do? And one day I was leaving for work or I was leaving to school or something. And I see this little black and I see this little black cat 
out just like hanging out on the sidewalk. And I'm like, oh, hey, how you doing? So, you know, I, I, I kneel down. I put my hand out. Cat comes right over to me, very friendly, like rubs his head up against my hand. Um, and I and and then hops into my lap. And I'm like, shit. <laughs> okay. So the cat had uh, a collar with like one of those little little cylinder things that you could put a little ID tag inside, like written down on a piece of paper. So I opened it up. And I read that, oh, you know, the cat's name was Shadow and lived in – and it was an address of one of the other apartments in the apartment complex. So, you know, I went over to the apartment. I went over to the apartment. You know, I knocked on the door. I was like, um, I found your cat. And they're like, um, no, that's not our cat. We just moved in. And I was like, oh, well, I guess you got a new home now. <laughs> so that cat ended up staying with me. Um for the next 17 years I, oh, I i kept that cat for the next 17 years um uh passed away in 2014 and uh he was my buddy man he was my he he went through multiple apartments with me before i got married uh multiple different places he was like he was my constant as 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 i was going through things and he was he was just a great cat um <laughs> And and lived in the house before we got the dogs. There was a, a very brief, I think, one year span when when my cat and the two dogs coexisted in the same house together. Um, I actually have a picture of the three of them sharing a water bowl dish, uh, like a, a drink of water at one point. It's like one of my favorite pictures ever. Um, but yeah, yeah, cats do seem to find you know animals do seem to find us. <laughs> Not to get off on a different topic, but um, we were having a conversation here myself with the roommates of Jeremy in his house here in Ohio, and uh, we, it was a conversation which we'll not get into about uh, capital punishment, and I have some very different wow. views on it. Um, <laughs> wow. But I think in a half facetious way, I think the people who abandon pets like that, roadside, highway side, and all that... Yeah might just be candidates for that sort of thing but that's mm -hmm. that just me neither here nor there and then by the way of course then there's elvis we got to hear about elvis okay oh, you, you bring that up i want to get into um an incident in in Oldbridge here that has been going on for that went on for pretty close to a week as you mentioned abandoning uh there was a pretty large dog uh that was dumped um, last week, early, like Sunday or Monday of last week, and it pretty much wandered this part of Oldbridge, like in a five mile radius for about up until yesterday, um, down to them actually having to track down a trapper and get, you know, they finally trapped the dog yesterday. Just, a, just a sad story, but, uh, you know, it turned out so far, it turned out okay. They actually have the dog finally um in one spot and trapped um but i well the other thing is uh i want to get in there's no cats in this house and never will be um and i've never had a cat because my mother was allergic to it now both girls are allergic to them so it's mm -hmm. not gonna happen um it just it can't um so Two thousand ten. Elise and I are talking about getting a, about getting a dog, and we. She said, "Let's go to a, this uh, pet, uh, pet smart or pet co or whatever it was online. They were doing an adoption that day, and I forgot what had just come out. Something something was coming out on Pixar, and actually was supposed to go see it with Crystal and her kid." And I messaged her and said, we're going to a pet adoption. If I said, if I text you and said, I'm going to the bank, that means we're not coming to the movie and we got a dog. So I text her. Uh, so anyway, um, there's a, at least sends me a picture of this one dog. And I said, oh, he's cute. And then we go and I actually see him. And somebody's kind of, it seems like they're going to, they're going to take him. And, um, they passed on him. And I said, huh. So I went over and started petting him, playing with him, and I'm like, oh, 
And then, you know, they came back and they, they gave two, two more times. The same couple came back and hemmed and hawed about it. Then finally, ultimately <laughs> decided they were leaving. They weren't going to take them. So we did. Um, an interesting thing was um, that night or like the next night, he comes into the room, jumps on the bed, or we put him on the bed and he curls up right in the I, I, right in the middle of right near Lisa's stomach. I'm like, we were trying to get pregnant and I'm like, huh. So a week later we find out she's pregnant. He knew. He must have Interesting. Felt the heartbeat or something that obviously she couldn't feel, but he did. He knew immediately. Like immediate as soon as he got in the house, oh boy. Yeah. You know, uh that was just over twelve years ago. He's gonna be he'll be thirteen in April. Um, well pain in the ass that he is. Uh Delena has taken some responsibility now of taking him out. Um which is good and helps me. Um and helps me in the least. Um, he, he actually kind of bit my foot um, Tuesday, uh, which is not would not have been the first time that he's put me in the hospital. Uh, had I had gone to the hospital with it, but uh, he he bit me bit my hand uh, right after Sadie was born. Um, he got me good. They had to, uh, they were able to tape it, but it was, uh, with the butterfly, uh, cover, but, uh, he got me pretty good. Um, he's what rather he annoying. He likes stealing things. He's rather annoying. Um, but as he's getting older, he's, you know, at night he's a little better. He's usually up. Now it's only once or twice. It used to be almost every hour um, at night. But uh, the cat thing. Um, we were, we went to Elisa's cousin. We knew they both had an issue. Um and her cousin said um, the cat, her cat had passed away and that she'd clean the house really good in this net. And Delena was still, um, still having issues. And we thought it was, you know, maybe a month or two. Uh, it had been like six months or a year almost that the cat had died. And it just, it, Delena was so messed up. We actually ended up going to a park around the corner so that Delena could breathe. <laughs> breathe. Um so there would be no cats in this house ever. Um, Delaney can't even go near them, really. So, when's the last time the girls were around a cat? <laughs> last year. I only ask because sometimes kids outgrow allergies like that. So every now and then you sort of check, but I get it. Maybe could Delaney won't. Delaney won't most likely. Not at this point. Yeah, we had uh, kids who said they were, well, they're now adults, who uh, said they were allergic and turned out that they aren't anymore. Uh, but uh, I came from a household that um, we had Valentine, and she was a Persian, and she she, uh, she was all white. And my parents like uh, like uh, did the whole thing where uh, when the cat dies, you know, you need to get out. <laughs> uh, fortunately, the cat lived to 21. <laughs> and I didn't have to worry about that. But, uh, you know, it's like one of those things where it's like, really? Is this my uh, ticking time bomb <laughs> type thing? But, uh, yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, also with uh, rescue cats and all, with, not that I want to drive this to that extent, but um, all, all our cats have come from uh, some terrible, like, uh, reasons and uh like i just showed the one white cat 
Apollo, him and his sister are bonded and they were just older cats and nobody wants older cats. So that's how we wound up with uh, Ophelia and Apollo, you know, because they were bonded and we had to take both of them and, you know, and they're great, uh, beautiful, uh, muscular cats and they're short hair, white, but, um, who, who friggin' sheds the most around this house? Those friggin' two cats. I mean, you know, and then, uh, we have Boop, which we call Butterscotch and, uh, he's a Norwegian, uh, hunting cat. He loves to be outside any chance he gets. So all the neighbors know him. I mean, I got pictures of the next door neighbor being like, uh, your cat's at my back door. And there's a picture of him just like sitting there, you know, and he's just a lovable guy. I never met a cat that has a personality like this one that just, you know. He just doesn't care. It's just about life. He just walks around and thinks he owns everything. And all our neighbors have uh, dogs. So it's like he either torments them or they love him. So, I don't know, like cat's personality, I guess. But, um, yeah, he, I would have to say that Brendan, my oldest, is like for some reason all the cats are attracted to him to his room to hang out and all and uh yeah they all kind of love brendan for some reason i mean you know colin has his cats as well that are you know like when he sits on the couch to watch tv and all but there's nothing more loving than seeing my wife also like sitting down to watch tv and the cats one or two of them you know have to take their turns to sit on her lap and uh hazel will come up and she'll like fight off the other cats to like uh go sit in heather's lap but uh boop is like one of those things where he wraps himself around her head at night and it's like one of those things where it's like she'll wake up with a crooked neck and i don't know he he just that, that's like he thinks that's his position no matter how many times you throw him off that bed that's where he wants to be <laughs> you know, we had a dog, Thor, growing up, and I heard, I think David was, Dave was saying he had one, too. I think a lot yeah, of people yeah. have. And, the and dog had, of thunder. Yeah, and then I, then, I had, uh, <laughs> then I had Zeus before that. Uh, but Thor was kind of a schizo. He, he, he was kind of a stray, but we had taken him in. I think he'd been abused by folks before, but I always hit it off really good with him. I never had any problems. But he would always, sometimes he would go after other people. And, you know, that was concerning to my parents. Less, I think, I guess, less so for me at, at that age. Um, but, you know, I'd take him to big parties and stuff. We'd, I'd just throw him in the car and we'd go out and go to parties. And, you know, it was always fun. And, um, you know, then I went to school. I went to college. And so I moved out. And my parents said they gave him away to this truck driver that somebody knew. So I'm like, oh, okay. And then probably four years later, my sister was with us and she got, she had my mom, my mom was standing in front of us. And she goes, you guys didn't give him away, did you? You guys put him to sleep. And my mom, I could just read my mom's face. That's what they did. <laughs> so they told us they gave him away, but they didn't because he was, I, I, I could see now, you know, he would be a little dangerous probably to, uh, to, to kids or something like that. But you know, it was just kind of, kind of silly. And, you know, I was also thinking back to pets that I've had. You know, when my dad had the farm, my cousin and I had a, a pig uh, that was the runt of the litter. Runny was his name. It was like a red-haired pig. So we could just go out in the, in the barnyard and be like, Runny, Runny. And that little pig would like come running to, towards us and just like follow us around the barnyard doing things, which is pretty cool. And then, um, and I, you know, and I was thinking about this. I was in nursery school and we went somewhere where they had chickens hatching and they gave us a chicken. Like who, who, who gives like a, who gives like little kids chickens? Did you guys ever have any of that stuff? So I had this chicken I took home. And so my, and my grandparents were okay with it. So then they also had this big Husky. I, I can't remember. It, it's not like you're the normal white Huskies with the blue eyes. You see it's some other type, but it had, it's super long haired. And that Husky would lay down and then chicken livers. That was my chicken would come and get it on top of the dog. And like both of them would, he would just like sit there and rest. The dog would just be like sitting there resting as well. It's pretty funny watching that. <laughs> that big old husky with that little chicken on, on his back. <laughs> Till he made it dinner. 
but it's fine. Interesting uh, thought for Jason. Um, Elvis is an older dog now, right? Yeah, 13. Well, he'll be 13 in April. I think. If he were to encounter issues that where the humane thing to do would be to take a direction like that, would you have the girls with you when you did it? No. No. Nope. Interesting. Some people think that that's a life lesson and all that sort of thing. And no, they, they they know, they know what happened. But no. nope. what would you do? What would you do if one of them or both of them said they wanted to be there when that happened? Uh I don't know. I have to figure that out. But um, I don't think they're. I don't think that's either one of their things. So. Well, it's certainly not my thing either. But yeah, yeah, that's that's one of the toughest questions about having pets with with particularly young kids, and yours aren't quite so young anymore. But uh, they are the youngest in this pack here, so I was curious about that. Yeah, but, and this leads me back to to when earlier Keith, you were talking about like, taking responsibility. I think that was yeah. what you said take, taking responsibility for another living thing. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, that's like taking the full spectrum. And yeah. I know Frankie did that when he was in high school with his mom. He had a dog with his mom as well. It was a, a big old lab. And so it was sick and sicker. And she actually had him making the decision, you know, she says, Well, we'll help you. And 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 but but we need to figure out what's the best for the for the dog. And so, but he helped to make the decision. And then he was there with the dog when, when they put it down. So it was really sad for him, but at the same time, you know, it, it's, it, it is, a, it's, it's a kind of a tragic lesson, but it's a, it's a good one. I mean, you know, late, later on, you know, you look at my history, then I, I had a similar thing happen with my dad when my dad was ill and we had to figure out to continue support and those kinds of things. And, you know, it's not easy to, to, to do that. And so he's kind of done that with something that he loves already yeah, it's, understands it's, the he understands that other side of it. Like I'm not doing this because I don't like it, and I'm not keeping this dog alive for selfish reasons. You know, yeah. or for the best best interest of the dog. My uh, my best friend, my best friend in the world uh, is a veterinarian, right? So um, she she is amazing. Obviously, she is um, there. She's she's described some of her days as you know some days that she walks in and she is the merchant of death. Like every patient that she works with, you know. They, you know, they're, they're, oh, that's yeah. a big part of her job. Um, and, you know, she says a lot, you know, because she deals with this a lot, obviously with, with, with her patients and, and the families around them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, she feels, and I kind of agree with her yeah. that when it comes time for your loved one to take that step away from the world, um, the best way to, the best, the, the most comforting way for them to do it would be to have family by their side as they leave. Um, and that's, it's not very, it's, 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 it's not as common as it should be because owners don't feel like they can take the pain. So they hand their pets over to a doctor or, or, or you know, or a vet or a stranger and they're in this room and they don't have any of their loved ones and, you know, they could be scared, you know? Um, and it's it's really hard. It's really emotional. It's it's funny. I'm getting choked up just thinking about it because when when I put, had to put my cat down, I'm like I'm I'm like right there right now. Um, but um, to go along what you what you were talking about, when you agree to take the responsibility of taking on a pet, and this is applicable to your kids, mm -hmm. it's everything. It's 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 beginning to end. It's birth to death, and right. um and everything that comes in between. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that uh, we had, uh, I guess, the kids with their first touches of pretty much any kind of death. Yeah, it was uh, one of our my uh, my first black cat, and uh, we moved here and whatever, and uh, he had uh, a couple different issues, which developed into pillow paw, and uh, they said, "Oh, it's yeah." Not your, your cat has pillow paw. I'm like, what the hell is that? And they're like, oh, well, he could have got it from the litter, this and that. I was like, the cat was perfectly fine. 
Uh, and like all of a sudden, you just went down. And I, I remember sitting upstairs in my room, you know, on the bed with him and Heather. And uh, my kids were across the street because it was the uh, fair. And they were all having a great time and all. And they, you know, they came back to this, like, he he's just not going to carry on. You know, we had to go that afternoon and put him down. And it was just terrible. And they didn't want to really be involved. We, didn't, we really didn't want to get them involved. But, yeah. I don't know. They were uh, younger then. But, you know, yeah. But, yeah, it's like one of those terrible things. And I can't imagine, like, if anything happened to any of the seven that we got now. Like, forget it. That's um, interesting. We've certainly taken a turn in this conversation, and I also have this challenge. Um, Keeper, as I mentioned before, is uh, I'm the guardian uh, of Keeper. Uh, he was my brother David's who passed away in February. And David and I used to uh, have these somewhat jovial conversations. He tried to make the most humor he could out of his own situation. Keeper was thought to have kidney disease. And that he would not be around very long. In fact, David had him on IV fluids and was doing all sorts of interesting treatments. Uh, and David, last summer, not this, not summer 2022, but 20, summer 21, we used to sit around and talk about how which one of them would last longer. Uh, he, was sort of, he was sort of like almost running a pool on his own life uh, versus the cat. Um, and so David go, David passes away in February, and I become the guardian. And I thought I would have him for like three months. I was bringing him home to ease his transition at that point. Turns out he doesn't have any kidney disease. He was misdiagnosed. He's perfectly healthy. But he has some other things. Um, poor little bastard can't poop very well. So every few weeks... Um, we go, I go I take him to the vet because it has to be <clears throat> manually extracted. Yep. That, will, that will add up over time. He has a, a grade three heart murmur, as they call it. He does have little signs about his kidneys that eventually will be kidney disease, but he's not there at all. Yeah. Um, I thought he was going to come home for three months. It would be just him and me in the house, and I would be there for him, and he would transition. Well, now Justin's involved. And Jeremy's involved. And now, yeah, they're 23 and 20, so they're older and they're somewhat adultish. But so Keeper probably will be around at least another couple of years. At that point, they'll be firmly attached. Mm -hmm. That means if Justin isn't already firmly attached. So the question I asked you, Jason, I have you with older children, I have that to myself. At some point, uh Keeper's gonna die. Come up. Yeah. And Will either of them want to be with me? I'm pretty sure Justin will. Uh, you know, I, Jeremy hasn't quite gotten attached because he's hardly ever home. But you know, you can tell he's still quite fond of the cat already. Uh, Justin sees him every day, so that question's definitely going to come up when the time comes. Um, hopefully, it won't be for another two, three, four years. He's 13 now, but he's certainly had his share of challenges. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but uh, I was not expecting that when I. And I really didn't think it through either when I said to David, when he asked me to be guardian, and of course I said, yes, I wasn't going to say no. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, you don't think through things like that. You you do yeah, when, you when the kids are little and you get that little puppy or something like that, you know, there's going to be a, a period, you know, Dave talked about how you know, the dog will probably be with us through high school, maybe even into college or something like that. You think it through then, but uh, this is sort of a spontaneous, semi-spontaneous uh, where I didn't think anybody was going to have any, you know, connection to him at all, except me. Yeah. Um, boy, did that change in the time? <laughs> you know, no, I, I, I think, um, I think deep down, you, you, you knew. You, it took you. It's taken you a while to prepare yourself, but I think that that you knew this was a possibility. You just didn't want to face it. <laughs> that this was a possibility that you were going to bring him home. This cat was going to be, uh, was going to have a second life. Well, so, I certainly hope. I, I certainly always hope that. I mean, you know, you don't want you, you want to have uh, life as long as you can have life. Mm -hmm. uh, and and you know, we could get into the whole philosophy of when keepers there, David's there. You know, he sort of lives on through the cat. But uh, I, I before I even left Denver, 
uh, with Keeper. Um, I was sure it was a very short term thing. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, my family, my brother, Joel and his wife, Sue, and the people out in Denver and all that who were with, with us when David passed, everybody thought it was a short term thing because that was the diagnosis. And we had no, we'd never dreamed that the diagnosis would have been butchered so badly. Wow. Well, they say stress can cause anything. Well, it's true. The cat, was did, stress like, you know, the cat uh, pet says, you know, just like you said, you know, uh, Elvis jumped up on the bed and knew right away. They're, they're very empathic creatures. And yeah. uh, he knew David so, was dying. And maybe he was trying to, in a way, he was trying to take that, that away from him. David. Yeah. Keeper was extremely aware of David's condition. And you could tell behaviorally how he was reacting to it uh, and how he was miserable. When, when I showed up, I had met Keeper a couple of times, but I didn't really know him that well. And then after David passed, uh, I showed up and and you could tell Keeper was just lost. He was confused. He kind of knew it. He, he, I, I think David had stopped by the uh, apartment uh, a couple of weeks before when he when he knew he was going into hospice or not going to, when he's going to the hospital before hospice. Um, he would stopped there and I think he had said goodbye. And I think Keeper understood it. Uh, and Joel would go over there every other day to feed him and such, but he was kind of alone. Uh, and he was really lost. He was really lost. And it took him a while to even talk to me. And it took him a while to, to kind of be part of my life. Even after we got back to New Jersey, you know, he, you could watch him. He was wandering around the house looking for his human over and over and over again. Where's my guy? Where's my boy? Where is he? Um, so he's, you know, really settled into bonding with me. God, he orders me around the house all day long. But now he's starting to do that to the boys. So, you know, and now that bond is starting to happen, especially with Justin, who's there every day. Um, and yeah, he does I, He does apparently plan to be there for a long time, which is fine by me. Awesome. Cool, man. We chase Jason right out of the room. Maybe he's bringing Elvis back to the picture. <laughs> Elvis has <laughs> left the building. <laughs> Get back here. <laughs> Not quite yeah yet. but you know it's it's you know thinking about the you know and and i just had another it's very similar to you keith i just had something similar that happened to me very very recently with my mom passing away in november my mom had two cats uh for a long time when she was down in um delaware mm -hmm. and uh one of the cats passed away last year and the other one thankfully the one that survived is the one that was much more socially friendly my mom had two cats one was socially friendly one I never saw it like any of my visits that I went down. Uh, but the, the other cat, we'll, we'll, we'll call him Snowflake because that's his name. Um, when my mom passed away, uh, you know, I, I went down there. We, we took a look at things. And the first, honestly, before anything else, the, my first critical order of business before anything else was to make sure that Snowflake was taken care of was to make sure that Snowflake had home, food, shelter, and love. Like, because, yes, my mom has passed, but there's a living creature still here, and I'm not going to leave him here by himself. Like, that's just not going to happen. Um, I wasn't in a position to be able to take on another animal at my house, uh, just logistic-wise and emotional-wise. It just, it just wasn't in the cards for me, but... I'm fortunate that I I, uh, I have friends of mine that have two younger children that were looking to adopt an older cat uh, to bring into their home. Uh, people that I know, people that I trust, people that I know that are good with animals. So it worked out really cool. well to be able to find a home um, for Snowflake where I still get pictures to this day. Um, Snowflake has adopted new humans. He's adopted, um, the uh, I believe, the daughter um, and stays in there quite a bit. And uh, seems to be doing very well and adjusting very well to his new home. So I'm very, very thankful for that. You know, but yeah, I mean, you know, we think about we think about the impact that pets have not just on our lives but on our kids. You know, teaching them how to take care of of, of somebody or something that that can't provide for themselves. You know, feeding, um, cleaning up afterwards, walking, exercise, love, attention, playtime. Um, you know, it's really that learning those skills on how to go beyond yourself and and 
take the responsibility of caring for this living creature that can't do it themselves, you know? Um, and that part of, I think that part of having pets and parenting really goes well together. You know, it's the, like I said at the beginning, it's the gateway drug, I think, to having your own kids. You know, it makes you comfortable. Oh, there he gets. <laughs> That's the quietest I've ever seen Elvis. I'm impressed. The whitest? Really? Quietest. Quiet. Well, he, he tends to voice his opinion when I'm at the house. So, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dave, Dave, I have to tell you, when you put out the post about Snowflake, my fingers hovered over the keyboard more than once. Yeah. I came yeah. close. I, I, I really thought about it and I talked to some friends and yeah, he, he just keeper had just been he'd spent 13 years being completely alone uh yeah. not even seeing his own human very often because my brother worked several jobs and was out of the house a lot um and uh he just thought it, it would be more trauma but uh i came i came this close man i wanted to it's, do it's hard you know i mean I'm, i i i was fortunate to find a really good i think i found the best possible home for him so he's gonna get love attention caring and he has a new family uh one that from the looks of it should be able to last him until his last day because you know when i was talking about snowflake and when i was looking for a home for him the thing the only thing i could think of is that you know he had lost everybody in his life like my mom found the he and his his brother well, i don't know if they were brothers but they were found they were adopted together um S sunshine they were like they were like found under a house or tucked into the back of somebody's garage or something when they were very young. And um, my mom took them in together because they were found together. Sunshine didn't want to deal with anybody. The only person, the only human that Sunshine ever wanted to talk to was my mom. Everybody else, if anybody came in the house, he just stayed in my mom's closet. Didn't come out for anybody. But Snowflake would come out. Snowflake would come out and and be sociable and hang out. And he had those two different colored eyes. He had a blue eye and a green eye. And he was all white. And he was adorable. Um, and all I could think of was that this poor animal just lost everybody that he knows and loves in the last year or two. Like lost Sunshine last year and lost my mom recently. And it's like it was heartbreaking. And all I wanted to do was make sure that he was in the best position possible to get love. You know? But, you if know, you I don't think. If you had posted one more time, I would have yeah. had him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't, I, I don't and, and it's funny because I don't know if that, I don't know if that feeling of, I need to take care of this and really be passionate about it. I don't know if that develops as strongly if you don't grow up with pets yourself. I would, I would agree with that, but I did. I mean, I had, yeah. I had never a time when there wasn't pets in my house. Never. Yeah. Well, that's 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 one thing we we've, we've kind of discussed. Um, when that eventually does happen, which is going to, I mean, it's back to nature. He's gonna if something's gonna happen eventually, and he's not gonna be here. Um, right now, there probably won't be another dog, at least for a while. Um, but we've already discussed, you know other options and what we might do things we might do down the road of maybe guinea pigs and things like that but yeah it's not going to stop it's not going to change you know um i have a feeling that at least for a while there'll probably be something shortly after he's gone um just because uh you know sometimes kids and adults need that kind of companionship that isn't human sometimes it's just, just the fact of life uh, people need these things yeah so and and jason speaking of guinea pigs i've got a story for you guys so oh frankie's mom <laughs> frankie's mom wanted a guinea pig so i bought it for her this is when we were real young and so i got her this five dollar guinea pig from walmart or wherever it was from wherever they had pets mm -hmm. and you know we had it sitting in the corner and i think i was probably finishing up my undergrad and that little sucker was in its cage. I'm sitting there watching all of a sudden it was making some funny noises, but and it wasn't, it was kind of wasn't acting normal and it just goes, it falls over on the side. So I run, I go, I go, Wendy, something's wrong with, and its name was baby. It goes, something's wrong with baby. So he goes, Oh no. So she scoops it up. So we're driving to the vet. 
I'll never forget this with a five dollar guinea pig that was sick, and we're like breaking all these laws, and I'm like <laughs> trying to trying to yeah, cut yeah. the the, the stoplights and stuff like that, trying to go through parking lots to, to get around the line to hurry to get there. And we could have put in hundreds of dollars, if not thousands of dollars into saving this little guinea pig. Well, $5 and guinea pig. pig. Yep. Yeah. Well, and, and I would have done whatever, but, she, but luckily she said, uh, the, the vet's like, I don't think we're going to be successful in whatever we do. So I, I was glad to hear her say, well, you know, let's, let's do the right thing then and, 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 uh, and the suffering. So, but it was just funny. <laughs> just, I'm like, cause I, I did that. And then after I did, I'm like, you know, I could have gotten a lot of fines for this, you know, thing we could have replaced for a few bucks, but it's, but it's, more than, it's, it's yeah. more than the money, you know, I mean, it's five bucks is all cost, but at the same time, it had this level of level of commitment from us and this, and then all the yeah. time we played with it and everything. So, you know, the, the value is much greater than what we pay for them. Now the interesting thing is, I, I, I we we already looked. Of, I, I I remember, you know, the life expectancies of those things were like three to five years. Now they're like eight to nine. Yeah. Like, Wait, what? Yeah, they're like eight or nine years now. I'm like, oh wow, wow, oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> Guinea pigs are improving while the humans are not. <laughs> not yeah, going down. <laughs> the uh, dwarf bunnies are supposed to last about eight to ten years, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, BB left with my ex-wife when she moved out and lived a 13 plus year life. So uh, right. it was very cushy. There was no, there was no, uh, you know, competition in the environment for the, this creature. <laughs> By the way, yeah. speaking of having a lot of pets, Doug, you'll appreciate the fact that long before there were kids, nothing to do with kids at all. But there was a time in my life when I lived with a, uh, a woman, uh, uh, Jason, you've met Val. Uh, she was a girlfriend of mine in the 80s, uh, and she's still a very good friend of mine. Uh, and uh, we lived together, and we had five cats together and five ferrets. Wow. Uh, oh, ferrets. You know, cat. every time you say that, your phone breaks up. <laughs> they were ferrets. Right? ferrets. Yeah. Uh, the uh, cats are easy to take care of, but ferrets are a different story. There's a lot of care that goes into them. You've got to bathe them frequently. and um very much a lot of interaction with them yeah they can think quickly yes Yes, they can yeah i mean we've had lizards turtles snakes uh we came from a large family of uh lots of different things but i not to plug them or anything but there are a lot of people out there that do foster these animals and definitely uh go check out your local uh place to find an animal that is uncared for yeah that, you know like, I like i said i got seven cats and they've all come from i i could tell you stories about all of them like none of my cats are are normal well are normal <laughs> <laughs> damaged goods now <laughs> they're but uh yeah they, they've all come from uh, different stories and all and they are all lovable and every one of my cats for some reason are are very sociable and uh we love them all and yeah so yes, definitely. Uh, yeah. I, I, re- I reiterate what doug said you know go to ch- if if you're seriously thinking about it um or even contemplating it minorly yet to really look into it into fostering um i'll tell you about my i'll, I'll say my sister-in-law's information because <laughs> she'll show up at your house <laughs> if, if you're willing if you're willing to spend the money if you really want to spend the money go to a breeder if you're going to get a dog especially a dog go to breeders do your research do your homework on this stuff because there's some people you know there's good and bad and there's some really bad so you know you'd be careful but yeah definitely I think fostering pets for children is a great is a great thing to help them in, in the growth into adulthood. Um, I could never foster a pet because I would never it wouldn't be fostering it would just be taking the pet. Yeah, that's how I wound up with some of mine. <laughs> adoption, adoption is another way. Obviously, the adoption they're all over the place, especially now. Uh, usually, any pets more any pet co, any pet whatever you walk into. Uh, usually on a random weekend, they'll have them probably once a month. Uh, you can look into those. They're usually actually pretty, some of them are pretty reputable. They're pretty good. Um, but anybody had anybody have anything they want to add before we wrap this up? 
<laughs> Meow. <laughs> <laughs> that about covers it. I think it's a pretty good place to leave us. Um, so, uh, from all of us here at Dad's on Life, take care, everybody. And Keith, of course, eat my shorts. Chomp, chomp. Thank <laughs> you.